house of God, though. I'm thankful for the opportunity we have to be in church. There's no better place to be. I don't care whether it's Wednesday night, Sunday night, Tuesday night, Monday night. Anytime we have the opportunity to be in church, I, I want to be in church, and I'm thankful for the opportunity. We're going to start off service tonight with prayer. Um, we have a, a number of needs. If they'll go ahead and put them on the screen behind me. Um, we have, a, we have a number of needs. We need to continue lifting up the Markles. They, they need God to move in a, in a mighty way in their lives. Uh, continue remembering Sister Haitley, um, Brother Jack Chesser, Sister Rogers. Uh, continue remembering Doug Mullins and, and Debbie Warsham and, and uh, Jeff Moss. He's, he's still in dire need of, of God to move. And, uh, but we're still believing God. We, we still call on a God that cares. We still call on a God that does miracles. I know some days it feels like it's, it's been a rough day and, and maybe we got bad news, but he still cares. He still does miracles. So we're going we're gonna to call on his name today. If, if, you have a, if you have a need, make it known by the lifting of your hands. And we'll all, if you'll all stand, we'll all go to the Lord in prayer. He knows what every lifted hand means. He knows even before we cry out. But, but tonight... Just reinforce that by crying out to God, asking him to move on your behalf. Lord, we thank you tonight. Thank you for your grace and mercy. God, you see every need in this place. God, you're not surprised by where we're at, what's going on in our lives. God, you know exactly what we need tonight. God, I pray that you would meet us in this service. God, I pray right now that you would fill this place with your presence. God, that this would not just be another gathering on a Wednesday night, but, but that a powerful move of your spirit would, would fill this place. God, I pray tonight that you would heal in this service tonight. God, that you would deliver even in this place tonight. God, that, that you would set free the captive here tonight. God, you know every need in this place, every hand that was lifted, every word that's spoken tonight in prayer. God, I pray right now that you would meet us here. God, that you would fill this place and that you would go and visit those in the hospital and those sick at home and those in, in bad shape tonight, God, in, in their dire situations. God, you know, God, I pray that you would move in this place. God, I pray in this service that, that your word would go forth and that your power and glory would fill this place. God, I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated. All the, all the children are going to go ahead and go downstairs um, out the back door there where Sister Adrian's walking out right now. All the children, um, they're getting ready. They're getting practicing and figuring up how to make a Christmas play this year. And so we're looking forward to that. So we're going to keep praying this. We're going to pray for them and, and pray for the leaders and pray for all those that are working with all those kids. But it's, it's, isn't it a blessing to see all those young people and children going going out to... We're, we're blessed. We're blessed that there's a traffic jam at the door. I'm thankful for, for all of our kids. Um, but uh, uh, Brother Gene is going to come and lead us in our congregational. Um, and uh, let's, let's worship the Lord tonight. I'm thankful for what we have in this place. We have a great crowd tonight. Give yourselves a hand for being here tonight. It's great to see all of you. And we're thankful, but, but let's worship. Let's, we didn't show up for nothing tonight, right? Did anybody show up for nothing? No, I'm glad nobody else raised their hand. I was just trying to trick you. But uh, I'm, I'm thankful we didn't show up for nothing tonight. Let's worship the Lord, and, and if we'll worship the Lord, he'll meet us in this place. Let's worship. See all them people leaving? They must have heard I was going to be leading the song. Y'all have
thankful that I know where to go. There may be times when it, it seems dark and it may seem dreary, it may be confusing, but, but I'm thankful that if I go to the Lord, he'll be there. Uh, Sister Andrea and Sister Beth Ann, they'd go ahead and start making their way. They're going to sing us a special tonight. And uh, I believe if you'll, if you'll get in here and, and just allow God to move in, in our worship, then, then everybody can leave tonight and say, we've been blessed. I, I'm thankful that, that we have an opportunity. I know it's Wednesday night, but I'm thankful that we have an opportunity to be blessed in our worship. We can all it takes is us beginning to worship and we'll be blessed. Let's worship a little. every time they sing that song but it seems like a lot of times when they sing that song I know it doesn't even talk about this story but the story of Abraham sitting in the door of the tent comes to mind when the angels come up they 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 start coming his way and he begins to minister to them he begins to share some bread with them he begins to take time and and entertain the angels and when he does that, he just takes, he does simple things. He just gives them some water, some bread, some meat. He just, just does the basics, just what is kind of expected. But when he begins to entertain the angels, he begins to get his promises. I know it's just Wednesday night, 
But if we'll take just a few minutes and entertain some angels with our worship, if we'll just take a few minutes and, and allow God to move in this place, then there's no telling what kind of power can be loosed in this place. Let's worship the Lord tonight.
it wasn't for the Lord If not, it's not too late. He's still, he's still in the difference-making business. You can be seated. I got a, I got a couple announcements. Uh, if, you'll, if you'll give me your attention just for, for the next couple moments. Um, this, this announcement says, monstrous amounts of candy for kids. I guess ginormous and large and big, that, that wasn't enough. So we need a monstrous amount of candy. No, we're... we're um, this October 31st, instead of trick-or-treating, we're inviting a bunch of kids here. We got a bunch of kids. You saw them. And they'll be here that night, too. And instead of trick-or-treating and all that, we're going to bless them with candy. We're going to talk about Jesus. We're going we're gonna to have a good time, but, but we want to bless our kids. So, so bring monstrous amounts of candy. That Every store you go into will sell you some. You can go into three or four stores, and they'll all sell you some. And so just bring, bring monstrous amounts of candy. Um, October 24th when is a Wednesday night. We're going to uh, do a pink out for breast cancer awareness. So what that means is, if you don't understand, all that means is you wear pink. It's pretty easy. You can wear a whole lot of pink. You can wear some pink. But just wear some pink. It, it doesn't hurt anybody. So, so we're going to have a, a pink out for breast, breast, breast cancer awareness. Um, and anyone in the church that is a breast, breast cancer survivor... Please see Sister Beth Ann for a picture tonight or Sunday so that we can display it on the screen and so we can celebrate what God's done. Um, and, and so uh, there's going to be a men's golfing outing at 8 a.m. October 27th. Must be 16 or older to, um, to go, but it's uh, all the men are welcome. There's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. We're looking forward to that. It's going to be a blast. Um, October 31st, it's not going to be a blast for me because I don't know how to golf, but it'll be fun anyway, chasing little white balls around, the, around a big pasture, right? So it'll be, it'll be a good time. So uh, uh, October 31st, we're going to have uh, chili and hot dogs will be served after church for everybody, and so we're going to be having, having a, a 
get together and enjoying that, enjoying fellowship um, that evening. So uh, the the men in music are going to play a musical, and at this time, I think, well, we we already dismissed most of the kids, but the youth are going to stay in. So so everybody just stay put and listen for the word. We also have an offering tonight. So if you have a missions offering, um, it's missions offering night, and uh, so. We're going to take up missions offering. This none of this money stays in here. It doesn't. It doesn't go to to pay for the light bill or anything around here. It goes all goes out the door to to great mission works around the country and around the world. And we we try to try to support different works that are that are spreading the gospel, not just in in this community, but but all around the world. So as the men of music play a musical, please give in this offering and. introduce you in, in here in a minute because I just ran out of breath trying to make all those announcements but uh, I'm excited tonight Brother Tanner has a word for us I've been excited ever since I I realized he was preaching tonight and I'm, I'm thankful tonight that he's preaching I'm, I'm excited I'm looking forward I love to hear Brother Tanner because he, he's not gonna he's not gonna tell you anything that's not in the word and I'm looking forward to the word speaking to us as, as he comes let's Let's pray for him. And uh, in fact, let's let's pray as, as he comes. Lord, we thank you. God, I pray that you would speak into our lives tonight. God, you see exactly what we need. God, I pray that you would speak through your oracle tonight. God, let your word go forth in this place. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, I don't know about you, but... You know, many times here lately I've been uh, noticing on Wednesday night that everybody makes a remark that I know it's Wednesday night, but we can still have church. But you know, as they was beginning to sing over there just a few minutes ago and that thought was rolling in my head, well, it's just Wednesday night. But you know, I begin thinking that our Wednesday nights are getting that much powerful. I begin to think, I'm like, man, I can feel the presence of God so much stronger in our during the week services, it's unreal. But you know, I'm thankful for that tonight. Uh, first and foremost, I, I'm missing our pastor tonight. There's no other like Brother Josh. I'm thankful for him trusting and believing in us young ministers when he is out to step in and to help him out. We're not fulfilling his shoes whatsoever, but we are just here to be a willing vessel. Uh, you bear with me, my voice is trying to leave me already, but that is just a trick of the devil because I believe that God has something for us. I'm very excited to bring this forth tonight because I feel last night I went home and I was studying and I 
I wrote every bit of my notes out. I was excited. I was like, man, I've got it figured out. I even wrote every verse that I was going to be reading down, and there was a lot of verses that I was going to be reading from. And then I, I get up first thing this morning, and God's tugging me a different direction. I'm like, Lord, did you not see all that work I put in last night? But you know, I began speaking to him. I said, God, if there's a different direction, please lead me. Please show me that because I do not want to step in hindrance of somebody and their tomorrow. I don't want to hinder somebody from getting what they need tonight. So I said, God, please show me the direction. But luckily enough, God, when he started to show me this different direction, it was sort of on the same lines of what I was going to preach, but it just had a little bit of a twist. But I'm going to begin reading in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 and verse 32. This is not where I will stay, but I will come back to it. It says in uh, chapter 13, verse 31, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Verse 32, Which indeed is the least of all seeds. I want you to pay attention to this, this in particular verse. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. And becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. I'm going to uh, uh, begin there, but I also want to turn to Matthew chapter 17. Before I get started, I'm going to pray that God leads and guides me through this tonight. If I'm going to ask if all of you would stand and trust and believe with me tonight because I believe that God has a message not because brother Tanner is bringing it but be because he has brought his people for a reason tonight and I believe he has something for this church God we come before you tonight Lord thanking you most of all for just one more chance to hear your word God and to feel your love Lord I ask that you help us to all focus on you tonight come in one mind and one accord, Jesus, willing to lift up your name above all names tonight. Lord, I ask that you anoint my voice, God, strengthen it tonight. Jesus, use me as only a mouthpiece, Lord, for I am a willing vessel, God, and we'll be careful and praise you for it all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm going to go on over to Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth in the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Here this man has a possessed boy that he is begging and pleading God to please heal him. He is needing help in the time of need. But you know, he had done, brought his young son to, G, uh, to the disciples to get help, but they could not cure him. Many wonder why the disciples couldn't do it because they should have the power also. But I continue on with uh, verse, six to, verse 17. Then Jesus, said, Jesus answered and said, O oh, faith, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? I want to focus on verse 20 for just a moment. And Jesus said unto, him, unto them, Because of your unbelief. Oh, hear me tonight, church. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I go back and I begin talking about a little bit of the description on the mustard seed tonight. Has anybody in the house even seen a mustard seed? It's not even as big as the tip of my finger. The grain of a mustard seed, the size of just the seed is one to two millimeters. It's about 0 .05 inches. That's very tiny. If you're, if you're not careful with that seed, you will lose that seed. The size plant, one to two meters, three to six feet. But though under certain conditions, if it is took care of, 
It can sometimes grow to three to five meters, 10 to 15 feet, high or more and just as wide. That little seed tonight can grow to something greater than just that little seed. If it is under the right conditions, it just takes a little faith tonight. I want to throw that in real quickly. But Jesus says, verse 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, they did not believe that they could cast that devil out. They did not have the living faith. They might have had some faith tonight, but it was not living. That faith was not active. They wasn't constantly putting that faith to the test. They wasn't constantly trying to build their faith. And it said, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto ye, have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. And you can say to that mountain, get behind me. You can say to that mountain, you're not going to stop me today. You're not going to slow me down today. Get into that sea. Get out of my way, devil. But all it takes tonight is just a little faith. I want to quickly mention my title for tonight. For tonight. Mountain moving faith. That's powerful. It, we, we was having us a good time at work today. I went to a co-worker of mine that is also a preacher. I said, look, it said to call on your brothers and sisters in time of needs. I said, I need a little advice. And we began talking about the power of God and just what faith can do there at work. And you know, I just felt a sweet Spirit of the Holy Ghost come upon me and I said, you know, it is just so powerful to think if we just trust in God just a little bit, what can happen? If we just trust in God tonight just a little bit, just a little like that seed, what can happen? But you know, if we do not have the faith tonight, we can have faith, but is it living? We can have faith, but are we put into the test? Do we actually believe in the faith tonight? And then it says on in verse 21, and this is the way that you begin to grow your faith. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. The disciples might have not have been prayed up. They might have not been fasting that certain day when that situation arose and they might have not been ready for the task at hand. But you know it is oftentimes it is very easy to have that faith for somebody else. It is often easy to say, Brother Robert, I believe God's going to heal you tonight. But oh, lo and behold, when the devil starts knocking on my door, do I truly have that living faith inside of me? Do I truly believe in what I believe for him? Can I seriously say when something comes at my door that I can say, go on, devil, I ain't got time for it today. Can I actually look at that mountain and say, be thy removed, get out of my way. But you know, I begin thinking of just the power of the faith tonight. I begin thinking about the mustard seed because if you take care of it, if you're constantly looking after it, if you sow that seed in the ground, you're not going to sow it in the ground of darkness tonight. You're not going to put that seed in the shade because without any sunlight, it will not grow. Without any water to drink, it will not grow. But under certain circumstances and under the perfect conditions, that seed will grow tonight. I'm here to tell you if you're in the building tonight and yet if you're going through a trial, just keep holding on. If you're going through a trial, start putting that faith to the test. If you're going through something tonight, if you just received a, a diagnosis tonight, say, oh, no, today. You don't have to accept it tonight. You can have that faith to say, go on, cancer. Get out of my way. I don't have time for it. I don't have time to let the devil get me down tonight. I have a family that I have to uphold. I have a church family that I have to be there for. I don't have time to get sick tonight, devil. I can look at that mountain and say, get out of my way because I trust and I believe in the power of God tonight. But I began thinking that God simply said to the disciples, it is simply because thy unbelief. Why are we not having the services that we once seen before? We don't have the belief that they once did. Why are we not seeing the revivals that we once experienced? Why are we not having the revivals that went down in history? Because we're not having the faith that they did. We can say that we have faith all day long, but is it living faith? Living faith inside of a dead soul is not going to do you any good. 
That's kind of harsh, but it is powerful tonight. You can have the faith, but are you really trusting and believing that the things are going to come to pass? A couple weeks back, we had me and my wife had something spoken to us here at this church. And you know, from that very day, I have not quit believing in that. From that very day, I have trusted and believed in what was spoken into my life because I have the faith tonight, because I have Jesus Christ. I can say that I have the faith all day long because it is living faith. There's many times I will go through stuff in life and I'll just laugh about it. Many people might sit there and ponder about it and say, well, this is going to get me down today. And I say, well, I can't let it do it. Because God has brought me way too far tonight to let it get me down. God has brought me from the miry clay and he has put me on a rock to stay tonight. Lord, I love you tonight, Jesus. Lord, you are great tonight and greatly to be praised. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it's, it goes ahead and it gives the little definition of what faith really is. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I can have stuff spoken in my life each and every day. Those are things hoped for. But if I have the faith, I have the evidence that it will come to pass. If I have the faith tonight, it will come to pass in God's time. And if, but I begin thinking about the faith tonight that if we really put it into our life and we really have it living on the inside of us, that's when the blessings begin to flow. Where the faith begins to grow, it all begins to grow along with it. That's when we're going to see the outpouring of the Holy Ghost more. That's when we're going to start seeing the financial blessings poured out to us more. That's when we're going to start seeing the church services that we once experienced before. Oh, come on now, church. I need someone to hear me tonight. Because I feel like there's many people tonight that's got your faith buried in the devil's sand. There was an old worship song they used to sing. Some of you people better understand you've got your faith buried in the devil's sand, but you need a mountain. Oh, you see the devil, he's tried me time and time after again. He's tempted and tried, but you know, I just keep fighting. I just keep going because you know, I can speak to that mountain and be thou removed because I have Jesus on my side. If you're a born again child of God and you truly believe in Jesus Christ, you have that power. Don't let the devil tell you any other way that you don't have the power because if you have accepted Christ in your life, you have more than enough power because God died on that cross for us for a purpose. It's not to die and to go to the devil's playground tonight. Hell was only intended for his people, not for God's people. We are not welcome there. Just like it says the the, uh, wicked and the unrighteous cannot stand us sit in the congregation of the righteous because they start to feel something good on the inside. They start to feel something just a little bit greater than they've ever experienced before. And that power tonight is only coming from Jesus. But I go back to Matthew. No, excuse me. I go to John 15, 16. And you know, there's many times that we get down in life. There's many times that we let the situation take a hold of us. And we say, oh God, where are you? Oh God, why me? Why this? Why that? And you know, many times we get in here and we start feeling the power of God in our lives. But then we walk right outside these doors and we let that mountain hit us where we left it. We run right into that mountain once again and say, Well, I'm just going to throw in the towel today. I have no more in the tank. We let that mountain start taking a hold of our life. But I begin to think about John chapter 15 and 16. And I truly believe that someone needs to listen to this. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. That your fruit should remain remain in that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. I begin thinking that when that mountain comes upon me that I'm not, I'm not destined for anything greater, but God said, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. 
Just when I get down on myself because I might not be the best preacher around. I might not be the best teacher. But God said, I didn't call you to be somebody else. I didn't call you to follow in their footsteps. I chose you to do something different. I chose you to have a different kind of faith than them. I chose you to stand out just a little bit more. But it says, ye have not chosen me. I have chosen you. That might be a little pig trail tonight, but God wants me to tell somebody through the Holy Ghost that you have not chosen God. He has chosen you. If you're sitting there thinking that I cannot tell this mountain to get out of my way, just remember that God has chosen you for a reason. God has put you in that situation in life for a purpose. The Bible clearly says that he has done went before us. He's done won the battle. He is just seeing who is going to trust and believe in him to make it to the other side. He has put you in the situation that you're in right now for a reason. It could be a testimony that changes somebody else's life. I want to have the faith tonight that is so strong that a brother or a sister can come up to me and say, Brother, I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for this situation. And I want to have the faith that I see it come to pass because I believe and trust in God tonight and I put that faith in action but tonight as I come to a close I know I wasn't long winded I didn't really intend to be tonight I just felt like God wanted me to get something across pretty quickly but God wanted me just to remind somebody that it don't take just a whole lot of faith It don't take just a whole lot of believing, but the more that you let that grain of the mustard seed grow, the more things that you will see come to pass, the greater news that you will hear, the greater witnesses that you will see, the greater things you will see take place, the greater blessings that you will find in your life. But I ask you tonight, are you speaking to that mountain or are you allowing that mountain to speak to you? Oh, come on, church. That was my whole point tonight was that one sentence and I saved it for the very end for a reason. I ask you once again, are you speaking to the mountain tonight or are you allowing the mountain to speak into your life? Because if we sit down and we play coward tonight, the devil is going to overrule us. But I want to challenge you from this day forward, no matter what you face, no matter what you go against out those doors, no matter what the devil tries to throw at you, I want you to look at that devil. I want you to look at that mountain and say, get thee behind me, devil, not today. Because God has brought this church way too far. I know from a standpoint, a one-on-one personal standpoint on some of people's stories, and I can stand in the gap right now and know that God has brought all of us way too far. Brother Galen, he's brought you way too far. Brother Jason, he's brought you way too far. Brother Levi, he's not through with you yet. Sister Destiny, he's not done with you yet. Brother Caden, just keep pushing. Keep fighting, have that faith. Don't let that devil get you down tonight. I know I sound like a cheerleader, but I'm cheering for the good team tonight. I'm cheering for my brothers and my sisters because I want to see each and every one of you in heaven. I want to be able to walk the streets of gold with the ones that I worship God with here on earth. I have a burning inside of me that I need to know that I've done my part. I need to know that I am constantly encouraging people. I often battle the things in life and I often battle myself and I tell myself, well, I'm not smart enough or I can't, I can't witness to this person. They'll think I'm too crazy. But you know, I'm gonna start beginning to speak to that mountain. Mountain, you're not gonna get me down today. I will be a witness. I will stand out in the crowd because God has chosen me. God has called us to do a work for him, but who will let him? But I ask you one more time tonight, are you speaking to that mountain? Or is that mountain speaking to you? And as the men of music, if they'll play us something Uh, I'm going to ask that everybody will that is willing to grow their faith tonight. Go ahead, take a step out tonight. That's where it begins because I can promise you, you take the first step, God's going to take the rest. You show him that you are willing to do more for him and for his kingdom and he will take care of his people. 
Here lately, I have been focusing more on studying, more on praying. Because there's many times I get caught up in life, I say, well, I just don't have enough time. And then I begin to think, well, what if I call out to God just one more time? And he says, oh, buddy, I don't have time for you. What would I do then? Where would I go? So I have made a point to study more, to show God that I want that faith to grow because I want to be able to look when the doctor gives me a diagnosis and be able to smile through it. If I get in an accident where the, the light don't seem too good for me, I want to be able to stay positive for me and for the people around me. Let me tell you what just a little faith will do tonight. My father-in-law is able to be in service tonight. I'm not trying to embarrass him. But let me tell you about two weeks ago, it didn't look good for that old boy. But what the doctors didn't know is we served a greater person than they did. We believed in something so greater. And as the family started praying and believing and trusting, and we all began to put our faith together, let me tell you tonight, he is a walking miracle because of somebody's faith tonight because we stood in the gap where he was weak and where he couldn't stand no longer. We stood for him. I want to have that faith for everybody around me, not just my family, but the strangers that I meet on the street. Let me tell you tonight, a little faith goes a long way. But at this time, uh, Leah's not in here. Kalia is going through surgery tomorrow and you know that is just like the devil because brother Josh just gave praise to God for what he's done for Kalia and then here the devil is going to try to throw a curveball in her life but let me tell you it's just a mountain tonight it's just a mountain tonight so I want everybody that believes and that trusts in God tonight I want us to surround her tonight and I want us to pray to the good Lord that he'll keep his hands on her through the service.